Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. It's a little after 3.30. It is January 10th, Friday. It's about 62, 63 degrees in here, depending on which thermometer you want to look at. And that one will even tell you the humidity. Anyway, so we got like this whole winter wonderland thing going on outside. It's supposed to rain, it's supposed to warm up, it's supposed to do all kinds of things. Actually, I guess if you look where the car was, you can see some water down there. I guess that means it's above freezing. If you take a look at the uh, little thermometer out here, it says it's around 40. So, other than pretending to be Al Roker, what am I up to? Well, I got good news. I managed to get that ignition system, my portable ignition system, to spark. And let me show that to you first, and then we'll go through some of the details. Um, there it is. When I was in um, college, I had a doc, uh, professor, Dr. Jaquili, up in Potsdam, up in the olden days, and he used to always tell me, I majored in physics, and he used to tell me that I was too sloppy to be a physicist, that I should become an engineer. So I did. I finished my physics degree, BA in physics, and then went to school and became an electrical engineer right down the road there at Clarkson. So Potsdam State and Clarkson, I owe you. I don't want to tell you what year that was, but um, we did have to run away from dinosaurs frequently during the Ice Age. Basically what I've done is I've powered this up. I'm using this thing here. I don't know why I just didn't drag a whole car battery in for the size of it. And you can see it uses 17, 18 milliamps just in an idle state. I kind of knew I had a problem when I hooked up this rig here and went to power it up and it wasn't drawing any power so I said hmm maybe maybe Houston has a problem so anyway it's powered up it's ready to spark what I'm gonna do in the background you're not gonna see me but I'm gonna take this magnet and run it by this oops that pulse coil and but I'm gonna focus the camera right on the spark plug here I wonder how far I'm going to get into this whole thing before the phone rings 14 times and interrupts, but let's give it a shot. Am I still recording here? So, let's hope I'm still recording. Too much. Go out and focus. There you go. Alright, so let's see if I can show you a little spark action. So, you guys can see a nice spark, if anybody cares about how much power it's using. You'll also see that as it sparks, it uses a little more power. And if you spark more frequently, you burn more power. So now it works and for those of you who wonder why this is at all important to me and why you guys should care check this out the only part parts I'm gonna go with parts that I really care about let's say I wanted to use this as on a Honda 200 S well my battery is external my CDI is external, my coil is external, 
all this wiring is external. The only thing that's internal is the pulser coil and this guy. So basically what it means is that's what the pulser coil looks like when it's mounted. But see those two wires sticking off? You just unplug those two wires and hook ground up to the bike and there you are. You have a completely external power system. For those of you who know the 200S motor well, they do have an advance. This thing does a mechanical advance here. I don't know, could you guys see the way those are the weights. As the engine goes faster, the weights fly out. Um, with the mechanical advance, I'm going to try this system on a 200S without messing with the advance. If it doesn't work, I'm going to take this advance and lock it and put it in there and see if I can't get it to work. So let's pretend you guys want to build one of these at home for yourselves. This is kind of important. When I built this thing, it didn't work. So I'm like, piece of junk, why don't you work? And one of the guys who commented, and let me show you his webpage here, this William Staten guy, he commented and he says, are you sure that you have a DC CDI unit? Most bikes use AC CDI units. AC CDI unit means that you have a coil underneath the flywheel that generates AC power, which powers your CDI unit. A DC CDI unit runs off the battery, right? You might charge the battery with coils underneath your stator, but with just a battery, you could get spark, right? As I did, right? You don't see any flywheel spinning around there, do you? So anyway, here's his page, William Staten, very helpful, been helping me out. You guys should go to his page, subscribe, watch his videos. He's doing a lot of cool stuff. He's been doing a lot of engine swaps. Um, it seems that he has the ability to kind of like get a frame and then kind of get an engine. So he's been putting uh, engines from China onto Honda frames and um, um he put a Honda engine on a Chinese frame, you, you know, so he's kind of swapping things around, which is really, really cool. So, um, that phone's going to ring for So, that phone's going to ring 14 times. All right, so where am I? Um, so Bill Staten, William Staten, very important. This is the CDI I bought for the unit. And according to the description, this is description I bought read just like this guy. But take note of the spacing on both sides of the plugs. Then take note of the spacing. This is the right CDI. I bought two of them. Take note how much wider that guy is. Also, at my house, this phone does nothing but ring. All right, if you measure them, they're about the same length, right? But when it comes to the width, this guy is an inch and a half wide, four centimeters wide. That guy is a full five centimeters wide, two inches. Oops. So the one you need is the big one. Think of that. Remember, you need the biggest one possible. William Staten recommended that this is where I get it from. Um, United Express Distributors. What is that? L. Alexander 711. L. Alexander 711. And that's exactly the description. Type in that exact description and buy it from this guy right here and you'll get the right part. I bought two of them, 32 bucks. So they cost about $16 each. Not bad. Wiring diagram. Here's the wiring diagram. There's the battery, there's the spark plug, 
This is the um, ignition coil, the pulser coil, and that's the way everything's hooked up here. Now, I wonder if I could get it all. I think I got it all on there so that you can see. Right, you can see how it lays out. I got this thing sitting like that, like this, right, like that. And there's the one, so one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see I don't have a fuse in it like I should. Um, I guess I'm using my meter right there as a fuse. Um, I don't have an, well, actually there is an on and off switch on the power box, but you can see how it goes around. There's the battery. You can see how everything's hooked up. Um, I used black for ground, but for the pulse generator, run the green to ground. For the coil, ran the green to ground. For the spark plug, obviously, spark plugs have to be hooked to ground right you can see the wire that goes to it and if you actually look at this entire mess basically the lead that goes to the coil the green you could see all those wires coming off of there and you could see that kind of makes sense right need one for the battery one for the spark plug once again, that's the lead to that. You need one for the pulser, and you got the ones that go over to the CDI unit. Once again, this is the negative for the battery. Positive for the battery, just hooks up to number six on top, goes around. So hopefully you guys, there's a picture of the schematic. Hopefully it's nice and stable. There's a close-up of the CDI, close-up of the coil, close-up of the pulse generator, close-up of the battery, spark plug, and once again, if I zoom out, you can kind of see. So that's how it's all hooked up. Now, why is this important to me? Once again, um, Honda ATCs use AC CDI units. A lot of times when they don't spark, you got to troubleshoot them and you got to figure out what the heck is going wrong. By using this setup here with a remote CDI, coil, everything else, basically the only thing that I'm keeping is this from the bike. So if I hook up this whole thing with a known working external CDI unit, portable CDI unit, and it doesn't spark, I know I got to go in here and figure out what's wrong with this. If I hook it all up, it sparks, doesn't, still doesn't fire over, you, you know, now one has to start thinking about what's the timing doing and so forth like that. Um, about these coils, I have two of them sitting here. Oh, this is the good one. The other one I have, you can actually see a crack across here. I was calling these Hall effects. They are not Hall effects. There's actually a coil inside. So when you run a magnet by it, it gives a pulse. They are not a Hall effect thing. They are here. That is what you do not do to your um, your um, Hall your pulse generators. This was uh, from a bike that was obviously mistreated, and that crack must have broke the wire internally because it's dead now. All right, folks. I'm not sure how long this video is. I told you where to get the parts. Right. I told you, I gave you a schematic to look at. So you got a schematic. I showed you the thing actually sparks. And I showed you that uh, Bill Stanton deserves uh, you guys to go and look at his page and see some of the cool stuff he's doing. All right, folks, live, love, and have a great time. We'll catch you at the next episode of The Horde. It is supposed to warm up this winter. I hope to get out to the garage and actually try to put this on something. And, you know, do some other stuff. We'll see how all that happens. So, anyway, between now and then, remember to keep your tires down, 
your tracks down, your handlebars, and your steering wheel up, and we'll catch you on the next episode of The Horde. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting. And go, go see uh, Bill Stan. Go take a look at his page. He's doing cool stuff out there. Bye now.